Good morning, and welcome to Plymouth United Church of Christ in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Welcome to our online Easter worship. Whether you are here today in worship as a member, a friend, or a visitor, we hope that you feel inspiration here. Please join in our responsive call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. On this day, we celebrate resurrection. The power of life has overcome the power of death. Hallelujah. The light of love has shattered the darkness of fear. Hallelujah. The way of peace has prevailed against the violence of empire. Hallelujah. We come to worship the God whose resurrection power lives on in the Christ we serve and in our ministries of mission, service, and love. Hallelujah. Please join several members of our chancel choir in singing our opening hymn. join in our prayer of confession. Loving God, we confess that at times we do not share in the joy of the resurrection, but are caught in the worries and tensions and divisions of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontent, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy and encouragement of a new life in Christ. Call us back to your ways, O oh God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration, and peace. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Christ is risen. You and I are called to this new life, a life of forgiveness and reconciliation and community and service. You are forgiven. Accept your forgiveness and know that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Walk forward on this journey of faith, knowing your brothers and sisters are faithfully walking the walk with you. Amen. Please join in our sung response, Ale, Ale. Ale, Ale, Ale.
Hear these words from the Apostle Paul to the Church of Rome. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Please join in our responsive reading of Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let all Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. God is my strength and my might. God has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The strong hand of God does valiantly. The mighty hand of God is exalted. The strong hand of God does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of God. God has punished me severely but God did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hear the story of Jesus' resurrection and his appearance to Mary Magdalene as recorded in the Gospel of John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuani, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. 
Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Here ends the reading for the day. Please enjoy Plymouth's virtual choir as they offer the anthem, Love is Come Again, arranged by John Erickson. share with you one of my favorite stories from when I was young about somebody who was scared to go to a new place. The Monster at the End of This Book, starring lovable, furry, old Grover. Hello, everybody! The Monster at the End of the Book. Grover says, this is a very dull page. What's on the next page? What? What did that say? On the first page, what did that say? Did it say it was a monster at the end of this book? It did? Oh, I'm so scared of monsters. Shh. Listen. I don't have... I have an idea. If you do not turn any pages, we will never get to the end of this book. And that is good, because there is a monster at the end of this book. So please don't turn the page. You turn the page! Maybe you do not understand. See, turning pages will bring us to the end of this book. And there is a monster at the end of this book. And this will stop you from turning pages, see? I'm tying the pages together. So you cannot... You turned another page! You do not know what you are doing. Now stop turning pages. There. I, 
Grover am mailing this page to the next one, so you will not be able to turn it, and we will not get closer to the monster at the end of this book. All right, all right. Do you know that every time you turn another page, you not only get us closer to the monster at the end of this book, but you make a terrible mess. This will stop you from turning pages. A heavy, thick, solid, strong brick wall. I would just like to see you try and turn this page. Did you know that you are very strong? The next page is the end of the book and there is a monster at the end of this book. Oh, I am so scared. Please do not turn the page. Please, please, please. Well, look at that. This is the end of the book. And there is only here, only one here is me. I, lovable furry old Grover, am the monster at the end of this book. <laughs> you were so scared. I told you there was nothing to be afraid of. I'm so embarrassed. Have you ever been afraid like Grover? In our story of the resurrection for today, the women came to the tomb and they were afraid. They found it empty and they didn't know what was happening and they were so afraid of what could happen next. And when the angels appeared and told them Jesus had been risen, the story tells us that they left in excitement and in great fear. Maybe you have a lot of feelings these days. I think it's okay to be afraid and to be happy, to be sad and excited, to be disappointed and joyful. It can be really confusing. It was pretty confusing for Mary and the women who came to the tomb on resurrection morning, and it was confusing for Grover when he didn't know what was coming at the end of the book. But at the end of the story, at the end of both stories, it was really exciting. Grover found that it was just him and Mary and the other women found Jesus alive and in their lives and they had an ongoing friendship with him. And so we can have all of the feelings this Easter of being so being filled with great joy and still being full with free, fear sometimes too. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we give you thanks for our feelings, and that you are not afraid of them. We give you thanks for that you raised Jesus, that he shows us that love wins, and that we can have hope even when we're afraid. Amen. It is great to be with you this morning. I am very thankful for the connectedness that is afforded to us through the extra efforts of several from our congregation to make this online party, watch party possible. So thankful that on the celebration of Easter, we're not alone. We are together and held together by the Easter spirit of God. In the message translation, of the Romans passage we heard earlier from chapter 8, Paul writes, The resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It is adventurously expectant, greeting God with a child like, What's next, Papa? God's Spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are, parent and child. And so the question for this Easter morning is this, are you living that life? Or are you still running away in fear? Our little friend Charlie Brown in the Peanuts comic strip knows about fear. He once said, I've developed a new philosophy. I only dread one day at a time. It's awful living 
in the spirit of fear. Fear of the future. Fear of having the past catch up with us. Fear of rejection. Fear of failure. Fear of social contact. Fear of a deadly virus. Fear of unemployment or other financial issues as a result of this pandemic. In many ways, we are living in an age of fear. The best-selling prescription drug the last time I heard reported is Tagamet, an anti-ulcer medication. And even with some newer evidence that perhaps drugs that have Tagamet, such as Zantac, may contribute to a cancer diagnosis, sales of those drugs continue to rise. Also, one-third of the American population acknowledges that they have a sleep problem. Each year, billions of dollars are being spent on sleeping aids. Our fears are keeping the drug industry booming. So many of our fears really are irrational, and yet so much of our life is filled with fear. Think of a typical day in your life. How many times in that day do you find yourself afraid? And I'm just talking about the normal, everyday fears, like being afraid you'll hurt somebody else's feelings, or afraid that you will look foolish, or afraid that someone does not like you, or afraid that you might fail. I believe that a good part of most of our lives is based on fear, a kind of everyday what if fears we all face, not only in times of extraordinary events and trials, but all the time, not just, just during a massive pandemic, but the living of every human day. You know, the word fear comes from an old English word, fair, F-A-E-R, which means sudden danger. And it refers to fright when fright is justified. It refers to danger that is concrete, real, knowable. In such cases, fear is appropriate and sometimes useful if one is to escape harm. This kind of fear is really the least of our problems, however. We're more apt, you and I, to be haunted by anxiety and worry and dread. And anxiety is a word that comes from the Latin, anxious, meaning a tight feeling in the chest. It's a fear that stays with us even when there's no real or concrete or knowable stimulus. It is the fear of the uncertain, the possible, the what if. Anxiety comes from inside of us, within us not out, outside obligations, but within. And as usual now in Scripture, in Romans chapter 8, Paul puts his finger right on it. Fear, when it presents itself as anxiety, worry, or dread, is a spirit. It is something we carry around on our inside. And we have it long before we encounter anything actually worth fearing. It's a condition of the mind. It's a condition of the heart. It's a condition of the soul. Thus, the only cure is the reorientation or transformation or resurrection from within. That is why Paul writes, the resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. And so the only cure for anxiety and worry and dread is a new sense of identity, a sense of knowing who we are and whose we are. Back in 2004, Diane Conway published a wonderful little book with the title, 
What would you do if you had no fear? In which she approached all kinds of different people on the street with that question. And she wondered what would happen if people gave up their fear. What would they do with their lives? So here are a couple of the answers that she was given. A guy in the gym said, I'd, I'd ask some people out. That's scary, but the fear of living alone is bigger. A divorced person working at the counter at Starbucks said, I would fall in love again. A therapist said, I will buy a piece of land and build my own home. A graphic designer said, stop obsessing about what others think of me. An employee at a bead store said, I would start selling the jewelry that I design. A customer at a car wash said, I'd say hello to every person I meet. A member of a support group said, I'd give a hundred dollar bill to someone who has said or done something to inspire me, like the waitress who was kind when I needed it. And an event planner said, I love my life and it is full, but I wonder if I'm doing things that make a difference. So I would probably use my skills to raise money for charities full time. After all of her interviews with people about fear, Diane Conway concludes with these words. Those who read and ponder this question seem to gain a temporary reprieve from the limits they ordinarily place on their own lives. They begin to explore the life not lived and that alternative set of choices that linger in the recesses of the mind. Why do our de desires and dreams linger? Well, they beckon us and call our name because they're waiting for us to inhabit the life that we were meant to live. They're waiting for us to listen to our highest calling. What would you do if you had no fear. The resurrection of Jesus Christ casts out fear, sets us free from all fears, big and small. That's what the disciples eventually discovered. After the resurrected, Jesus broke through the locked doors where they were hiding in their grief and fear. And once they were freed from those fears, they became the disciples that they were meant to be, and a church was created. Even the ultimate fear, the fear of death, has been overcome by Christ. What would you do if you had no fear? How would you live your life? That's the Easter question. The resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life, writes Paul. It's adventurously expectant, greeting God with a child like, what's next, Papa? God's Spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are, father and children. The question for the morning is this one. Are you living that life? Do not be afraid. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Freedom's Community Ministries is a network of food pantries building ladders of peace throughout Milwaukee. We believe that a dependable supply of food is a means of bringing hope and dignity to our community. When on these streets, you've got to have respect. You've got to have dignity. Without that, you can't survive out here. We are family. We don't distinguish between black and white, rich or poor. Not only can I give the love, I receive so much love. If you, you talk about digni dignity and respect, 
Maybe you'll find it here. This is a great family. In this troubled Easter season, Plymouth's Board of Outreach and Mission has designated Freedom's Community Ministries as the recipient of our Easter offering. We ask that In this troubled Easter season, Plymouth's Board of Outreach and Mission has designated Freedom's Community Ministries as the recipient of our Easter offering. We ask that you strongly support their 40-year tradition and commitment of feeding the hungry through their efforts. You may donate by mailing in a check made out to Plymouth Church with Freedoms in the memo line, or you can donate online by going to plymouth-church.org and clicking on the Give tab and then Gifts and Offerings. As we enter into this time of prayer, we will share some music with with each other. And you're welcome to use this time to reflect on any prayer concerns that you have. And if you're watching this on the Facebook watch party on Easter Sunday morning, you're also welcome to share your prayer concerns in the comments. I also would just point out to you again that following our morning prayers, we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion together. Everyone who's participating in this worship online is invited to have bread and something to drink ready for that sacred time of sharing. In our prayers this morning, we hold Cindy Davis Clark, who's remembering her mother Joyce, who died last week at the age of 97, in a hospital where her family could not be with her because of the virus restrictions, and whose funeral was this past week. We hold in our prayers Pablo, Jack, Jackie, and Gabriella Muirhead, quarantined at home after a positive virus diagnosis, but thanks to everyone for support, they are all symptom free. Thank you, God, they are doing well. Prayers for Sheila and her brother Grant, who suffered a stroke eight months ago, and he's moving out of the hospital into an adult family home in Seattle this weekend. It'll be a wonderful Easter moment for him, Grant, and his family. Lucy Klebar offers a prayer request that I know we all join in. Prayers for all the caregivers, nurses, delivery people, truck drivers, doctors, grocery store, 
pharmacy employees, EMTs, firefighters and police officers, hospital staffs, housekeepers, social workers. We pray that God will keep them safe and give them strength and courage during this time. In prayers on behalf of Elaine, asking for prayers for all the people in the Town Commons Senior Facility in Grafton, which has been hit hard by this virus. Sandy Stadler asks for prayers for her daughter's grandfather, Bruce Wells, as he recovers from open heart surgery. And may there be prayers for a friend of a friend fighting breast cancer. And Crystal asks for prayers for her boyfriend's sister-in-law, Lori, whose leukemia has returned, so she's been put on hold for life-saving bone marrow transplants. And we continue to hold Mary Beth and Kathy and Anne in our prayers. Let us pray. When everything was dark, and it seemed that the sun would never shine again, your love breaks through. Your love is too strong. Your love is too wide. Your love is too deep for death to hold. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus and celebrated today as Easter. We welcome your resurrection for it is life-changing, life-giving, life-assuming, life-saving. We praise you for the light of new life that's shown on the first witnesses of resurrection. And we praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. We welcome the hope that it brings to our world. We welcome the light that it brings to our darkness. We welcome the empty tomb, for we know that it means you are alive and in relationship with each one of us. We do pray that the Easter light of life and hope and joy will live in each one of us every day and that we will be bearers of that light into the lives of others. We join in prayer for your Jewish children who celebrated Passover this week and our Muslim sisters and brothers who celebrated a holy day named Laylat al-Baraha, a day and evening filled with works of charity and a night of solemn, focused prayer, a night of forgiveness. Lord, may your resurrection give life to those who feel lifeless, those who are just going through the motions, and those who are grieving the death of a loved one. And be a source of blessing and healing to all who are crying out to you this morning in pain, with fear, with guilt, in sorrow, alone, lost, homeless, angry, despairing, direct each one of us to the source of our peace, our wholeness, our freedom, our comfort, our Easter. Lord, the resurrection of your Son gives us new life and renewed hope. Help us, starting today, to live as new people, starting right now in this moment of prayer. Grant us wisdom to know what we must do, the will to want to do it, the courage to undertake it, the perseverance to continue with it, and the strength to complete it. In the name of the risen Christ, Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right in our deepest joy, Holy Lord that you are here with us. 
and that we may open our hearts to you. Lord Jesus, our friend and redeemer, you are the resurrection and the life. Yours are the kingdom, the power, and the glory, the mercy, and our hope forever. We adore you and acknowledge your presence this day with all who suffer, especially people who have no safe place to gather or sleep or eat. We commit to your care all who are ill and those who grieve, those who are oppressed and in prison, and all who live under threat of this pandemic that has overwhelmed our world. Be especially close to all first responders, healthcare teams, and those who provide the necessities of life to our community at personal great risk. May we hunger and thirst for justice. And by our love for one another, may we announce your living presence in our lives, that is, our gift of Easter, with those of every generation who have served you, and with all those who wait for you on earth, we thank you and praise you, saying, Holy, 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 my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy, God. Risen Jesus, take the bread which we break. May it be for us a sign of your life broken and given, a continual nourishment for us and bread for the journey of life. And may the drink which we raise be the sign of your grace and presence, refreshing us for the renewal of life and poured out for the healing of nations. O Spirit of the living God, draw us near to us once more and help us to be signs of your life and love on earth. Alleluia and Amen. Let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us, offering ourselves unto God, our Creator, our Mother, and our the Father, Father, who art, art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All who seek a deeper relationship with Christ are invited to receive communion. I pray that you at home who are worshiping with us feel the connection spiritually and have bread available to you that you may now celebrate, take the bread, receive the bread of life. And now, we join in sharing the cup of salvation. Receive the cup. And may we all join now in a prayer of thanksgiving. God, God of resurrection, resurrection we, we give you thanks for a broken bread and outpoured cup. Strengthened by the bread of life, may we act on your behalf, opening the gates of justice for all oppressed by fear and hate. Filled with the cup of grace, help us to dry the tears of all who weep from loneliness and grief. Hallelujah. 
and amen. And let us join in singing together our closing hymn. And now receive our Easter benediction. May the loving power of God, which raised Jesus to new life, strengthen you in hope, enrich you with his love, empower you for life, and fill you with the joy of our faith, today and in all the days yet to come.